it's almost fun time. We're this close, this close. OMG, it is almost time for the funnest part of this Nocta Macro Simplex Target ID video. The one where we are putting everything on a board. According to the Target ID, of course. But we still have to do uh, nickels and trash too. But if you made it this far, oh, it, it, stick around for this. By the way, uh, so that you can skip around Look at the video description. I have chapters in it. And basically, you can go back to the first video, or you can go to whatever chapter that you want in this second video. It, it, it's, it's your learning. So, by all means, use it. All right, we have 10 buffalo nickels, we have 10 V nickels, and we have only found five shield nickels. Buffalo nickels. Jeez, right on the line. Really? What are you, 29 or 28? We'll say 28. Jeez. Yeah, we're, we're going over hundreds of items here, so hurry up. All right. Showing a little range. 28. 28, 28, 28, there's a legit 29, we'll call this one 30, and this one is a fully intact one, this is more of uh, one that I've gotten in either change or something like that, 30, alright, so the range is 26 to 30 on the buffalo nickels. And we put them there. That is very consistent with clad nickels, non-silver nickels that we've uh, gotten. All right, now it's time for V nickels. 26. 28. 29. 28, 29. 27, 27, 29, 30, 26, 27, 27, 28, we have a 25, so V nickels, at least the 10 that we tested are just a touch lower. So 25 to 28, we'll call that. All right, now it's time for shield nickels. All of my shield nickels are incredibly toasty. So let's see. And these are slightly smaller coins. Yeah, 26, 27, 28. Okay, I have more trash than even this just saved. But for the sake of the video, so that I'm not doing this constantly, look, let's break this down. We will put these on the board, okay? Really, if we're talking aluminum foil, aluminum foil, depending upon the thickness and how it's crumpled up, you know, it could end up very low on this board. Oh, those yogurt tops. Oh, they drive me crazy. All right, this page was meant for the Amphibio, but it applies really to all metal detectors. Target orientation, depth, purity of the metal, corrosion, mineralization level of the soil, etc. Even the direction of the surge coil swing may cause the device to generate multiple IDs. Now these, you know, these are going to be spread out in the mid-tones. We don't really see too much pull tab junk. We see bottle caps that will get higher in this scale. 
the Zinken scale, and even higher, maybe even into the lower silver range. And maybe I'll show you a few of those, but let's start by doing these, and I'll see if I could find some other interesting ones. What's funny is when I started watching videos of metal detecting, Pull tabs were the bane of everybody's existence. They're somewhat of a relic. You don't see cans that pull stuff off anymore. If anything, it's those annoying ones that are not supposed to be removed from the cans. Those still exist. But uh, in terms of the old school pull tabs, those are relics from the past. What you see nowadays, you see bottle caps. Oh, and those Zinkins. Zinkins are... Zinkins are horrible. All right, so I'm gonna show you, then I'm gonna put it, we have some aluminum, maybe a gum wrapper. 1718. Beaver tail. 1718. Just like a ring, 40. Well, 40, 41, 42. This is another you know, beaver tail without the tail. 45. Yeah, these live in the 40s. This is another one. That one is a little different. Okay, here's one. 48. A little bit thicker. 44. 45. Or be a jerk and be in the 30s, of course. All right, one of the smaller uh, beavers without the tail. 30, 31. And these are the tails without the ring cap. Gotta love those. Here's another. And another. Those live in the 20s. And another. Now you deserve to know this next story. Listen, I'm not one of those people that goes around, it's a government conspiracy. This is not a government conspiracy, but it is a conspiracy. Okay, these are old bottle caps. They're very different than the ones that are dropped these days. Although you see similar logos. But that's what it's about. It's about the logo advertising. Bottle caps that are coming out nowadays, I have observed there is a thicker coat of wax on them. There are two types of bottle caps, steel and aluminum. Or as they say in France, aluminium. Long story short, why would they want to do this? It's advertising. You see these on the beach? Guess what? It's advertising. What's the conspiracy, you ask? It's that extra layer of wax coating that is saving the steel, saving the logo. It's like, ooh, Corona. Ooh, Coca-Cola. So there's an extra coat of wax these days. That's my point. Let's see how they ring up. Oh yeah, the other thing, iron. Iron can really throw off a detector because of the way that it, de it decays. And it, thick pieces of iron, oh man, nails, stuff like that. I dig them all the time thinking that I got some deep silver. These are troublemakers. So this and the zincan, oh, horrible. Anywho, look at that. Everywhere, including silver. Where do I put this on the board? quantify that? Yeah, where do I put this on the board? Uh, everywhere? I can't like split this apart, but just keep that in mind for, you know, when you're digging these things, these are all over the place. If you see a signal that jumps around like this, it might be a bottle cap, okay? And that is where your ears and turning up your iron audio can really help you. Anywho, let's test a few more. All over the place. Now, something like this is different. 
This is one of the older metal caps. This is gonna be higher and consistent. Yep. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, these metal, true metal caps, they're gonna ring up, uh, they could even ring up, depending upon their thickness, on the edge of silver, like this one. Look at this one. Not quite as high as I've seen them, but uh, that's, uh, that's gonna be deceptive, especially if you find one deep. Here's another one. So the ones that are iron, they're gonna throw all over the place. They're gonna go all over the place. The ones that are metal, like this, Good luck with that. The way around it is your pinpoint, and you can hear that it's longer this way than this way. So you can tell a lot with how you pinpoint. Here's another metal one. Ah, fishing weights. Here's a thicker one. And, all right, let's place these on the board. I'm gonna have to seriously think about what I'm gonna do with these rusty ones because they're everywhere. Just know they're everywhere. All right, last set of pull tabs. It's the newer ones. These are the ones that really, they're bolted to cans. They're not meant to come off, but people are like, Whoa, let's do this. And now they're in different colors too. Great. 31, 32. That's another one. And they're all over the place too. It's like consistent by brand. Congratulations, we have made the fun part of the video. And we're gonna start out it's actually one of my favorite finds. It's something that has gold and silver in it. That didn't focus right. There we go. So it is a gold-tipped silver pen. Trudy King. Watch how silver takes over gold. When there's silver present in an object with gold, the silver takes over. All right, we got a silver ring. Ninety-two. This is a deceptive one. See the nine two five there. So this is silver, but very different than the ring up of that other silver ring. Here's something that is interesting too. Listen to the high sound and low number when it's in all metal mode. This is very helpful. 18 karat gold right here, but high. So 32. Sterling silver ring. That's where you'd expect it to be. We'll call that 88. 14 karat gold. 50, 51. Very thin 14 karat gold. The shape, the width, it, it's the same material. This is heavy but it is ringing up much lighter than that ring. This is a junk plated ring. See the chip at the bottom there? Watch this. About the same as the uh, 14 karat gold. I got some help. Hi. 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 
So I only recently found out that this was uh, 10 karat gold after really cleaning it and testing it. Recent as in like 30 seconds before I filmed this. So anywho, 10 karat gold. <laughs> we'll call that a 30. All right, we have gold chain. Gold chain. With a cross. With a cross 18K. I'm going to ball it up, that's right. I'm gonna ball it up. And let's see. 19? 19. Huh. Go Gabby, go. <laughs> All right, we have Cartier. Uh, hold on. 14K. 22, go, go, go. All right, we have a Gold and silver ring, 14K with 925. Watch what happens. Silver takes over gold. <laughs> Not very consistent, we'll call it a 77. Okay. Official 24K ring, don't hurt your back on this one. It's heavy, heavy. I wanna try. You wanna try, you can weight lift with this, but make sure you put it down by the number. <laughs> 35, go, let's see your weight lift. Yeah. One, two, yeah, too easy. Very happy. 14K chain, go, go, go. 20. Okay, we have 22K here. This had foreign numbers on it, 22K. 25. 26. 26, if it makes you happy. Go, go, go. 14K. What do you think, Gab? Um, I think it's 24. Yes, that is correct. All right, we have a ring again with gold and silver. Here, put it, put it in front. Let's say right in front. Good job, you know what you're doing. Seventy-seven. Love it. Go, go, go. Okay, we got a 14K ring with a... Well, the diamond doesn't ring up. Go, Gabby, go. 23 or 24. In Excellent. Between. Excellent. I scan it and you do it. 10K necklace. Go, go, go. That one you might have to put close. Close. And she dropped it. <laughs> 19. 19. It's my grills. What do they say? They say rogo, which I looked up. It means ugly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But let's see what they ring up as. That's what mom said. 21. Here, you got this one. She's been doing everything perfect. I've been watching. Yep, you're right. It's 21. Just make sure it is you know, flat and facing. We're doing ideal here. Next. 18K gold ring. Go, Gabby, go. Let's call it a 57 through 58. Yeah, so this ring, take a look at the thickness of it. Again, we're talking about thickness plus alloy of metal. You know, that's, that's what is with the ring up. All right, Cartier gold ring, I believe, I can't see it, I believe it's 14K. Uh -uh. Go, go, go. Come on. Very clean, I won't look at it. 22. 22 half. Okay. All right, so this one is a very deceptive ring. Look in here, you see that? Yeah, that's copper underneath. The top, oh. it, it's got weight. The top has gold in it. I don't know how far the plating goes, mm -hmm. but it is a copper ring with gold plating. Let's see. Everybody's waiting, Gab. Go, go, go. 7169. Uh. Okay, here, hold on. 93. Yeah, this is me doing it this time because it's reading both the gold 
and the copper. It'll go up to the 90s. It will it also... It 91. 91, right, but 73. Let's... All over the place. Let's call that... 86. Uh, man. It's like, 90, 71, I you guess. might you might think that this is a uh, a bottle cap the way that it jumps around there although there were no iron numbers er, let's call this an 85 okay teachable moment uh that probably was not an 85 uh, that was being read two different metals right there the uh, the very conductive copper underneath it seemed to take over a little bit more than the gold and it gave it a high ring up uh, plus it was thick you know so that's uh th that was a really interesting case study i think if you i, I said it's similar to uh, one of the rusty bottle caps but again that's where iron audio comes in where you can actually hear that grunt Simple and small gold ring, 14K. <laughs> Gotta be ready for your job, 23. Yeah, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 23. This was your mother's greatest mudlarking find. This is again 14K. It was an earring she found it in a parking lot. Oh, wow. Yep, when we were in Hawaii. You gotta get it close. Yeah, really. I did not know that. Here, let me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, not even ringing up. Oh my God. But it's good. I think I'm going to call this a one. Clean it more. I'm going to call this a one. A very close one. There's a six, really? Well, this is important. Look at that. 14K. Really? Yep, 14K. Now, let's put this again in front of the simplex. And I've said for the longest time, Equinox, the small items, this does not even register with one. the... Simplex. No, we're not. We can't. This does not register on the simplex. That is important. That's where multi-frequency comes in. Simplex runs 11.6 kilohertz. Uh, that is uh, in what's called the Goldilocks zone, where it could get uh, smaller coins, but really not tiny objects, earring-sized objects. You will see it register an earring that's a little bit bigger than that, but that one was uh, too, it, it was off the charts. Whereas a detector that uh, is multi-frequency, and uh, especially if it, it's the uh, Equinox 800, it is made for those tiny objects. I have the 600. The 600 would have gotten that. I realized that that is going to make some people mad but just from my honest experience, and no, I don't work for Mine Lab, um, you know, it would have gotten that because the higher frequency objects, I'm sorry, the higher frequencies that are run on detectors get the smaller objects. Uh, that's the science to it. The uh, my honest opinion on the simplex, which is covered a lot more in other videos, I'll tell you this. Best value on the market. It is a fantastic machine. But this is an example right here, in my honest opinion, of where multi-frequency machine that runs higher frequencies as well as lower frequencies, which get the more conductive targets, um, that's where you would benefit from that. 14K. Sixty-one. All right, we have a stainless steel ring here. Thirty-five. All right, this is a weird one. So, this is fourteen K. It's been tested, uh, acid tested, and it's got an engraving on the inside. And watch this. 
Let me show you the engraving. So that's one that blows my mind, and really I don't have an answer for you on why that is so high. Did I test it with uh, an acid test for gold? Yes, I did. Um, that one blows my mind a bit. My guess is that this area of the ring, the thickest area, uh, has some other metals in there. Maybe there is um, copper or, you know, you see the, uh, I don't know. This is another 14K ring with an engraving and has been tested. So let's do this. Rings up. Same way, a little bit lower. So 76, it's been a popular number. You got a penny, you got a wheat cent, you got a barber, you have a seated, you have a real, you have two reals actually. You got a fishing weight and you got a gold ring. Poor Yulani, or Yulvani, lost this ring, 14K. Eighteen K Gold and Emerald Twenty. We have platinum here, platinum and diamonds. Here's the ring. Let's see. Thirty-five. This is the closest I have ever gotten to a gold coin. 24K pendant. All right, we have 14K white gold here. My condolences to whoever CR is. You lost a nice ring. 14K. 61. So that one's an interesting ring right there, and you're going to see close up. The bottom is definitely a different alloy of metal. It's got plating over it. And the gold part of it definitely tested at 14K. But... Uh, there is another metal, and the question is how much of it is gold, how much of it is the other metal. But that's a heavy ring. 18K earring. I'm sorry, 14K earring. One of my favorite rings I have ever found. Platinum. Twenty-three. We have a nine two five ring. Focus, man. I love you. Ninety. Silver ring that I still have not cleaned. Eighty-five. Now this, despite its looks. This is a junker. This is a junker. It did not test as gold. Didn't test as silver either. 64. 10K, missing the jewel on the top. 20. 18K, simple gold ring. Silver napkin holder. Ninety-six. Super thin. Nine two five earring. What do you think it's gonna ring up as? Being that it's super thin, you can't feel the weight. I'm telling you, it's thin. Just like gold. Silver ring. Medium thickness, medium to full thickness, I suppose. 
Oh, this is gold, right? Nope. Look at that. That's a phony. <laughs> Rings up like gold, though. All right, I look. We're gonna do more. We're not done yet, but we're starting to see there's very few gaps happening. Eighty-six and eighty-seven. And a few of them I could have put in there. Uh, Forty. There is still a gap. Thirty-four. There's still a gap. Eighteen. There's a gap. Six. It was highly debatable that I, you know, I wanted to put something that was going low iron. But we're starting to uh, fill this board and we'll get a long way. Well, we're not going to do it all, but we're, we'll do a few more. All right, we have 10K gold chain. 14K gold ring. Stainless steel ring. I've used this as my wedding ring when I travel. Bling ring. It is not gold. That is definitely not a diamond. Stainless steel ring. Very old rose gold ring. All right, this is gold and white gold. 14K. I have to check this one. 14K, yes. 29. Pendant, gold with silver. Juicy couture. Silver will overpower. Fake gold ring made of copper. Got my buddy back here. I can't count, so I don't know if All you got to do is listen. You don't have to count. We got 14K gold chain. 19. Okay, I do know how to count. You want to hear a screaming metal detector? Oh, no. Ashtray. It's like, don't smoke. <laughs> don't smoke. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Call that 90. 14K, one of my favorite rings of all time. This is the bling ring. Occasionally when I'm feeling all sorts of, uh, you know, non-bourgeois, uh, I like rock this. You know, maybe one out of every 365 days of the year. <laughs> Forty-four. Fourteen K. It's the most common one. Twenty-eight. Who rocks copper rings? The police do. Get it? Copper? Oh, that's a good one. Oh. I know, Daniel. I know. Seventy. That, that's, that's... I know. I know. Apparently, Tony lost this ring. My condolences to Tony. Silver. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. Call that 55. All right, we have a... Wait, no. Quinceanera. That's 16, right? Yeah. Or no, wait. Quince... Wait. No, that's 15. 15. Okay, it is. Yes, this is probably from that. Okay, I'm smart sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> 20. Go, Danny, go. All right. All right, this one is a fake. It's neither gold or silver. 64. The Mercedes Benz Silver Ring. When you are an enthusiast of driving Mercedes Benz vehicles, you get the silver ring. And you don't drop it in salt water, because, or water, because it'll, yeah, there's a lot more cleaning to do. Oh, 
geez, jumping like crazy. Call that 70. All right. Really could have been one of a whole bunch of numbers. Why do, why do they call it stainless steel on most of the stuff that we have here? Although it gets dirt stains. That's my question. That's deep, Daniel. That's deep. Stainless steel, dirt stains. That's why he cleans it. Good job. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, this is fake Cartier right here. And speaking of stainless steel, that was a good... That's how I knew that it was a fake right there. Because you can see the staining in here. 21. Gold! 18K gold. 23. Oh. It's a little gold book. Really? Yeah. I believe this was 14K. It tested 14K, 22. We got Skilva, 925 ring. 70. We have a gold plated ring. Seventy-nine. Stainless steel ring. Twenty-one. Still has dirt stains. Oh, that's your favorite. The butterfly ring. I found this and I gave this to your sister and I expected her to be like, oh, thanks. She was just like, oh, great. Let me put it down. Let me... And jumps around. Oh, geez. 25. For people who are going super minimum with the amount of metal that is in this ring, this, I don't remember. I believe it was a junker. Honestly, that's one I have to test again. 24. 14K. 20. The silver triple ring that I was tempted to call three rings last year, but it's really one. It's silver. 90. 90. Yeah. This, despite its look, this is a silver ring. 76. Listen, I know this is dragging a little bit, but uh, we went so far as to do pull tabs and like all that fun stuff. All of the coins... Let's get you a good variety and we will we will wrap it up. Ah, here we go. Here's one. Switch hands. 21, that is a mix. Um, a composite ring, gold filled. Oh, it's a friendship ring. Holding hands. Let's be friends. That was silver. 74. Gold chain 14K. 17. Okay. All right, let's do some earrings and see what it picks up. Remember, this is a detector that uh, runs a higher... Uh, kilohertz, I believe it's 12, it's somewhere 11, 12 range. Um, and really, to get something small, uh, you want to run uh, even higher than that. That's where the uh, multi frequency machines come in because they get the, uh, in the case of the 800, you have 20 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz, little pieces of gold. But anyway, this is something that's smaller that did pick up. Unlike that earring before. 23. All right, believe it or not, gold-plated silver is a thing. Like, why hide the silver? I don't understand that. 84. Great ear. You ready for the most hideous ring you've ever seen? Yes. 
This is called the tabletop ring. <laughs> it's like a freaking tabletop. Really? Yeah, it's silly time. I've been <laughs> swinging things in front of my detector for hmm, 70. Right. Tabletop ring, 70. That is neither gold or silver. That is a big junker for people who like tabletops. All right, gold ring, 14K. 22. Gold ring with engraved ruby. 14K, but only half the ring. 25. All right, I tell you what, beautiful people, we got a whole box. <laughs> I don't know where to begin and end with this, but look, we're, we're starting to get to some conclusions. There is a generic gold range. We can clearly see with the simplex, if you're talking about signals in the low 20s, all the way up to the mid 30s, that's your classic gold range. But gold can most definitely surprise. A lot of it has to do with the thickness and the alloy of the metal, the width, the size. I hope I put that back in the right spot. Not sure if I did. And you get a lot of doppelgangers. That's a fake one. This is a real one. This is a fake one. Gold can go up and... In some cases, there are other metals on it. And the ones with really inconsistent IDs, it could have another metal on the inside. Look at that. Oh boy, I did it again. Um, moving up. You know, the silver range, if you're looking for something that is uh, silver, you know, you want to consider, okay, we have a silver trime here. We have silver war nickels down here, 31, 32. Both of these were minted in the war era, and it's combined with other metals. So, you know, there are different factors that affect uh, the ring up of a target. You know, here we have a huge chunk of, sig of silver. So that, being that silver is a good conductor, that is going to ring up high. But if you combine silver with another metal, and I think we started off with this, this is a gold tip, it affects the ring up of the object. So... It's going to take me a little while, but we are going to document this. And, you know, I'm going to do a write-up for you. Eventually, where I'm going with this is I am going to take pictures of that board. Hopefully, the dogs don't eat any of the rings. I have the door locked. Um, take pictures of each one of the rows. I'm going to make a booklet. I'm going to put it on my website. And if you're watching this video in the future, it's probably done already. But uh, if you're watching tonight that I'm releasing the video, not yet. But hey, hopefully within a week, it'll get, uh, it'll get done. So anyway, thank you for watching. And I hope this was helpful. Let me know, um, if, before I put this away, you know, is there something else that I, is there, I, I think we were pretty thorough. Part one, all American coins. Part two is uh, jewelry, it was junk, and the American coins I forgot, which was the nickels. Um, I don't really have an extensive foreign coin collection, so uh, I think that that is uh, as far as we can go with this. If I missed something, let me know in the comments. I thank you for watching.